George Dallum. I have to say, I'm a big fan of his work. Why? Because he's a sports scientist who got breathing, and more specifically, he got nasal breathing. And I had a conversation with him. It's, you'll see it on our podcast. I was chatting with him for a, about one hour or so, and it was based on his paper, but we went beyond that. And his paper was looking at heart health in endurance athletes. And guess what? Their heart health may not be good. And that may be impacted by the fact that they are breathing through an open mouth for long periods of time. And of course, mouth breathing, especially during physical exercise for endurance athletes, can lead to hyperventilation, reducing blood flow, reducing oxygen delivery to the heart. And the heart is not just the muscle responsible for pumping blood throughout the body, but the heart also needs its own blood supply and oxygen delivery. So if you want to do physical exercise with optimum heart health, think about breathing in and out through the nose. Now let's briefly look at one of Dallum's papers. In 2018, he recruited 10 individuals. He had them breathe exclusively through their nose for six months because when we think about it this way, when you transition from breathing through an open mouth, typically an open mouth is a bigger space, excuse my drawing, and you transition to breathing through two small nostrils, of course there's a load imposed to your breathing. You're not going to breathe as much air when you breathe through your nose in comparison to breathing through your mouth. Because you don't breathe as much air breathing through your nose, this is worth, this is, say that one again, because you're breathing less air breathing through your nose in comparison to your mouth, this is adding a workload onto your breathing. And that workload is in terms of the biomechanics, so your breathing muscle to die from is getting a workout, but also the workload is in terms of an increased carbon dioxide because of course this is generating air hunger. So there is an increased air hunger when you switch from mouth to nose breathing, but it's only initial. Because bear in mind, you as an athlete, even if you're a recreational athlete, you were doing physical exercise to train your body. But what do you do to train your breathing? And what often holds you back is the degree of sensation of breathlessness. Now your sensation of breathlessness is going to be influenced by two things. One is the strength of your breathing muscles, the function of your diaphragm. And the second is your tolerance to carbon dioxide. And this is where Dallam's paper is quite interesting. So he had his 10 recreational athletes breathe exclusively through the nose for six months. And at the end of six months, they were able to do a graded exercise test and they had 100% work rate ability whether they were breathing through their nose or whether they were breathing through their mouth. So in other words, these athletes, once their body had adapted to nasal breathing, they were able to go just as hard and just as fast during physical exercise with their mouth closed in comparison to their mouth open. But what's more, they had 22% less ventilation. So can you imagine doing your physical exercise with 22% less breathing? There's an economical saving there because it takes oxygen to support the breathing muscles. Now, that's about training your body to do physical exercise with less air. That's about training you to do more with less 